You're listening, watching the Sunday Night Bible Forum uh, here on uh, thebibleforum.net. We're here together every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, to look at life through a biblical lens and generally solve all the world's problems in two hours or less. Tonight, uh, this is May 17th, 2015, we're going to uh, be talking uh, a little bit in our series of the five things that you should know about the faith of, and we're working our way through the various presidential candidates. We're going to look at Mike Huckabee. This should be an easy one. Mike is a former Southern Baptist pastor, uh, so he's, he's not got some crazy things in his background. And if he is elected to this high office, he will be the first pastor, the first minister of the gospel who has ever sat in that Oval Office. James Garfield was a lay minister in the Disciples of Christ movement. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a Sunday school teacher. I've listened to him and his theology and his philosophy, and I just can't believe he's taught anything from the Old Testament before, uh, but uh, nobody's ever been a pastor, and if Mike makes it, that'll, he'll, that'll be the first one. And so we'll talk a little bit about the five things you need to know about his faith. We'll also talk about Ann Graham Lotz. I like to call her Annie. I don't know if she's an Annie, or Mama probably called her Annie. I don't know. Ann Graham Lotz is the daughter of Billy Graham. She's calling for nine days of prayer to start, I believe, this Friday. And you ask, what are we going to pray about this time? Well, interestingly enough, we're being asked to pray that God would be merciful, be merciful on the United States, and hold off on the day of the Lord. Yeah. Want us to hold off on the day of the Lord. More specifically, probably the day of Christ. She's calling this May Day. It's actually May Day, May Day. International Distress Signal. She's concerned that the Lord will begin his purging of this planet sooner rather than later. And because of the poor shape of the Christian church in America, she wants God to give us more time before all these various systems start coming unglued and before the, the, the structures start to crumble and people start suffering. One can only wonder what her eschatology looks like. Of course, there are other Christian organizations that are jumping on the bandwagon, uh, like the Family Research Council. And if inquiring minds want to know, I did. And so I went looking to see what it was that was pushing at her and these folks. And believe it or not, it's blood moons. And before that, it was the harbinger blood moons, fanciful suppositions about things that don't even factor in. And now we're going to throw our eschatology away and we're going to pray that God will withhold, delay his judgment. Something that was determined before the foundation of the world. Have you ever studied the decrees of God? God is eternal. He's not making this stuff up as he goes along. This stuff's already set in place. It's going to start when he decides it's going to start, and he's already decided. You can pray all you want. It's not going to change anything. But I don't know. We'll talk about it. Also, Chuck Pierce. I don't know if anybody in my audience knows anything about Chuck Pierce. I don't know anything about Chuck Pierce. But he's asking us to come and hear what the Spirit is saying. He wants to celebrate a Pentecost uh, in Corinth, Texas, beginning Thursday of this week. You know, Pentecost is 50 days after um, Passover. And he's got this thing that, you know, he's charismatic, you might have guessed. And as far as they're concerned, the, the Pentecostal blessing is, is continuing unabated. Uh, and most of us didn't know that the Holy Spirit has been speaking all this time. Uh, but these folks say that he has, uh, and uh, they want us all to get together uh, at this time 
in order to celebrate all of this. The voice of God speaking over your harvest is the subtitle. Now, I, I know the Spirit of God is at work in each believer. He's at work in this world, and he's motivating some things, godly things. But if he's speaking, and particularly through you, it's scripture, which means that it's infallible, inerrant, yeah, inspired, authoritative. Nothing these people have said corresponds to any of that. But it's still for them, the Holy Spirit is still working. And they're going to have Peter Wagner there. You know Peter Wagner. We talk about Peter Wagner periodically. New Apostolic Reformation. He is the ambassadorial apostle of something called Global Spheres Incorporated. Rick Warren's a, an apostle as well. We'll talk about him later. It's an apost apostolic network providing activation and alignment for kingdom-minded leaders of the body of Christ. Fascinating. We'll also talk about Israel and the things that are happening over there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff really starting to crank up here. Retired General Petraeus, David Petraeus, is warning the world that its boycotts and divestitures regarding Israel is creating an increasingly strategic problem for Israel. When a military guy talks about strategic problems, he's talking about their survival. The West is abandoning Israel to her own devices. Nations that Israel has counted on for the last several decades are walking away from her. Businesses and others are walking away. The Vatican just signed a treaty with the Palestinian state, praising President Abbas as an angel of peace. The Vatican is rightfully concerned about the various holy sites in the area many of which are on Palestinian territory, but an angel, and an angel of peace. I don't understand that. Also, atheists seem to be on the march. They're getting more numerous, it seems. A uh, new uh, poll is out, a research uh, outfit, I think it's Pew, but AP Associated Press is reporting that atheists are now numbering in the neighborhood of 30 31% of the population. That's up from about 23. Matt Walsh, who's a blogger, writer, and truth-sayer, according to him, thinks it's because the contemporary church is boring people to death. How much pablum can you serve up before adults get sick and tired of it? In another report, Pew Research says that those who identify themselves as nuns, you know how that works, right? You have all these religious designation, but at the end, you say, well, I'm none of these, and they call them nuns. The nuns tend to be uneducated, poor, and mostly white males. Yeah, I don't make this stuff up. The religiously unaffiliated tend to be high school educated males making $30,000 a year. 23% of the population are nuns, and the majority of them are like that. you got to make up your mind about this stuff. And rounding out our week is Rick Warren and Elton John. You saw that, didn't you? It's, been, it's over a week old now where Rick Warren wanted to kiss Elton John. No, he didn't. But they met together at a Senate hearing, and he suggested that if they kissed, it would be the kissed herd round the world. This is a grown man. The Senate voted this week, uh, or last week actually, to secure the release of Pastor Saeed Abedini in Iran. Our State Department, our president won't do anything about it. The Senate decided to make a vote. I don't know what good it does, but it puts them on record. Man's been there for over two years now. He may not survive this. He hasn't done anything. 
The House voted to limit abortions to 20 weeks of gestation. 20 weeks. You know how long that is? Five months. Five months. I have a grandson whose mother tried to abort him at five months. He wouldn't go. My daughter adopted him. My daughter and son-in-law adopted this child. He's 11 years old now, 12. He's doing fine. 20 months they want to kill these babies. House voted to limit that. Senate's never going to do it. It's, and the president won't sign it. It's not going to happen. And then there's global warming. Global warming is wreaking havoc in the Antarctic. It's getting colder down there. Now, the Antarctic ebb and flow. You know, the Antarctic is in flux constantly. And it, it, it gets and loses hundreds of thousands of miles worth of ice every year. But they're having to fly supplies in to these outposts because when the ships try to get there, the ships are so far away because of the amount of ice that has accumulated that they can't truck it in. They can't haul it that far. They're having to fly it in. Don't you feel sorry for these people? Not, not the Antarctic people, but the global warmest. I mean, they're, they're having an awful time. There's also a lot more. There's always bound to be more. Something will, might pop into my head, uh, and we'll just have to pursue that. Uh, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. We are going to begin the show. If you would like to hear the rest of the things that we talk about, go to the website, thebibleforum.net, and you can watch. You can actually watch anything all of going all the way back to July of last year. And so buckle yourself up, get a cup of tea. We'll, we're going to get started. <laughs> 